Good afternoon everyone, I hope you're well. Welcome to my live studio here in Wakefield. My name's Tony Derrick and I'm a guest presenter over on Creating Craft. Welcome everybody. We hope you have a fab time with myself and Tom. Tom. Um, Tom's now off school so we will be making an appearance every now and then with his crafting. Tom has just decided that we are going to be doing a giveaway and whoever pops a comment on to the live studio on YouTube. We will pick a winner before we close play of this live studio and we will mail it out to them. So before we get into any demonstrations or go any further, I've just got a little bit of inspiration for you from the lovely Claire Manning. Today is all about Claire. <laughs> So welcome to the studio. We are going to be doing a lot of um, the Claire Manning's products today. Claire's super busy. She's organising lots of TV events, TV shows and things like that. And we've managed to get a lovely discount code for you all. Um, and because she's so busy, I didn't want you to miss out on the opportunity of getting further discounts on things that are on Creating Crafts website. So if you are watching and you do love Claire's things or you love my things, also, um, there is a discount code for Claire's products on Create and Craft. If you make a note of this code, it is brush, obviously uppercase, and the number 30, 30. So brush 30. And if you go onto Create and Craft's website and pop that in the discount code box, you will get 30% off your order. How cool is that? And it's, it's, it is practically on everything that is on Create and Craft's website. So some of her papers are still on there. Some of her Christmas um, products are still on there. So it's a great opportunity to go and maybe grab the things that you may bu your budget wouldn't allow you to get earlier. So go and have a look, everybody. The code is going to be on for a week. How cool is that? So maybe, you know, budget permitting today is different to budget permitting in a few days. So it's going to be on for a week and it's brush three. Zero, uh, and thank you, Claire, and thank you, Creating Craft, for allowing that to happen. You know, but as you know, as companies, people need to keep producing new products, keep need to putting things through. It doesn't mean they're of any less value. It doesn't mean they're, a, you know, a poorer product. What it basically means is let's make space for newer products. That's all it means. So please take advantage of that code. So as you can see, we have Tom today. Are you going to say hi? Hi. And Tom's already decided we are going to be giving a giveaway. He wants to draw a picture for somebody and we will pick a name from the live feed and we will get it posted out to you. Unfortunately, um, I know Claire, when she does her video, she gives something good away. Uh, craft items, so papers, stamps. Uh, but unfortunately, you've got me today and you will be uh, receiving something personally from Tom and he will sign it and he will pop your name on there. So we're not saying it's as good as, but we're saying it's probably a keepsake, if nothing else, hey? 
So in today's studio, I'm going to be using some of the lovely Claire's products and these are the products that are available on the website over on Create and Craft. So if you do like what I use today, it's a perfect opportunity to pop on and grab them while you've got the 30% discount. So I'll just show you what we're going to be using. So I'm going to be using this one here. So um, this was quite a lovely one, this one, and it's Eat, Drink. Eat, drink and be rosemary. It's quite a quirky sentiment on there. And we're also going to be using this lovely one too with the lavender. I'm not sure if you can see that one because I've taken it off. It's the lavender on there. Now, as you can see, I'm pushed for space. I don't even have enough space to get my Eureka out because my young boy has attached himself onto the end of my mat. So we're going to be using a traditional acrylic block for space. So it's good for those people who don't have um, stamping aids or a Eureka. So here goes. Wish me luck, everybody. So let's just move everything out of the way. So Tom, you can draw your picture. You can go ahead and start that, sweetheart, and we will crack on with our lovely card today. So I have some lovely watercolour card, which is the Carter. This is available on our website. Now, all of the products I use are also available on the website. And if you go to our Facebook, sorry, our website and pop FBL into the search engine, what that allows is you to be able to search all the products that we've used in live studio over the course of a few weeks. So you haven't got to go hunting around and things like that. So this is the Carter watercolour cardstock. And I'm going to be using the smoother side of the two. So this is textured and this is the smoother side. And we're going to create a little bit of a arty card today. So I want to show you that when Claire draws her stamps, she's quite loose with her drawing. And it's a great feature just simply because if you really do want to look like an artist when you're putting your cards together and people wonder whether you have sketched them or you haven't, they're a great sketchy stamp, so it leaves scope for many mediums and many techniques. So I've popped this one, I don't know if you can see that there, there we go. I've popped it onto uh, my clear acrylic block here, and I've got two water-based pens. And what I'm going to do, if you look here, I have actually got a whole host of pens, but what we're going to do is we're going to start with these two first. So this is a little bit of a different technique and this is going to maybe make you look at your stamps in your stash a little bit differently. So if you haven't got these, it's fine. Please don't switch off. Look through your stash, see what you have got. Because um, you probably have got a lot that will already work. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to use the purple, because it's lavender, we'll stick with the theme. I'm going to put um, a purple one on the heads and what I'm going to do is you can see there are brush nib these now water based pens are better with a brush nib if you have them um, otherwise stamp out in a colour and then colour in without if not so I'm just using the pen on its side on the um, the floral element at the top which would be traditionally purple and I'm just covering it all over now I am using the side of my pen I'm not ruining the nib I'm just using the side of my pen so I'm just going to make sure I get lots of colour on there. And then I'm going to use the green. And again, this has got the brush nib. I'm just going to go over the green areas. And I've just got one shade of green there, but what I'm going to do is I also have another shade of green pen here. So I'm just going to add some different tones of green. I don't really know where I'm putting it, I'm just absolutely being random with it. I'm just popping it down in random areas. Now normally you've seen me with my stamps um, spray the stamp and then stamp. I'm not going to do it this time because I'm going to show you how to make it look even more um, arty. So I'm just going to turn the stamp over and I'm just going to go for it down this side here. I'm going to pop it maybe, let's pop it upright actually on this one. So pop it down. I'm just going to give it a good old push onto there. Keeping my hand on the block at all times, so you never, you always have a hand on the block, never take both hands off your block. 
Now you can absolutely do this in your stamping platforms if you want to. As you can see, there is no space for a Eureka today. So you can see you get this beautiful, I'll just lift that up a little bit, beautiful like sketchy finish on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little bit of a like window here. So I'm going to repeat the process. So I'm just going to pop it again on the side. It's just a little bit hot in here, that's all. Could you just pop the aircon on, thank you. It's getting rather hot, sorry about that. So again, some purple on there. And I'm just gonna pop the green again on here. Now I am gonna zoom in and show you um, a better look of how it looks when you stamp it out. So just one second, just get that covered in the green. Thank you. And I am just going to pop a different shade of green on there too. So I'm just being absolutely random with it. Don't worry if they're not the same as your other one because obviously two flowers are never the same anyway. So, so you could spray it if you wanted to, but I'm not going to. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm just going to do it a little bit higher and I'm going to make it look like it's coming over like here a little bit. Now you could absolutely overlay if you wanted to, to create a realistic fit. So you can see how we're getting a little bit of an image together. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ink up the two heads this time and fill this little space. So pen on its side. Like so. I'm just going to pop these two in here so it just looks like they're creeping in a little bit. There we go. See how you've created like a little bit of a fieldy look there. So what I'm going to do now is let's turn this into a little bit of a masterpiece with some water. So a little bit of clean clear water. I have here, it's a size two brush so it's quite fine and watch what happens when you add some water to these pens all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pounce in the area remember white spaces are key so when you're pouncing leave white spaces so you remember the technique we did a few weeks ago where it was just an absolute pounce all the way down that's what I'm going to do on the heads of each one of these So the white spaces are very important because I'm going to add a different colour in a second. So all the way down, not even within the lines, I'm not even trying to keep within the colour. So I'll just randomly do these three. You know, don't be scared to take the colour outside of the stamp as well. Make it look a little bit more arty. So I think we'll leave that as, as is with the purple. And then what I'm going to do is, what I suggest you do at home is get all your watercolour pens out, stamp it in this way, and then just play. You know, if you just want to use your brush, what's the matter? If you just want to use your brush and drag the colour out in a traditional way, like so, you can look. 
So I'm just going to, I'm not going to drag it all out, but I am, because li I like to keep some white spaces. But you can see by popping the two colours onto the stamp direct, I'm getting a, like a variation of greens in there. So I'm getting some darker tones, some lighter tones. Drag it all the way down. This is definitely um, mindful. The mind if you're into your mindful colouring and a little bit of time for yourself, this is absolutely the way to go. Yes, Tom. Yeah, we do. Tom's just saying there does mindful colouring at school. And do you enjoy it, Tom? So I'm just squeezing it round here. So I'm not doing them all, just absolutely random. Like so. So we have like a little bit of a pattern appearing there, don't we? Now let's make this more arty, should we say. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dry this, um, this off. And then we can move on to the next stage. So, so far, all we've done is taken our pens to our stamps. We haven't done anything fancy. We've just literally put the pen to the stamp. We didn't even spray it like I normally do. I'm trying to be a little bit different, you know, under pressure slightly using Claire's lovely stuff. Just get it clean first. That looks really good, Tom. Do you want to slide yours in to the picture and show everybody what you've done so far? Yeah. Look on there, you see. This is the picture so far. So one lucky winner is going to get Tom's lovely picture. You will be at some point. So what we're going to do is we're going to enhance this a little bit and make it more arty. So with the pen, I've got a pink pen here. <coughs> now, do you normally see pink on lavender? I'm not sure, but I've done it ahead of time and I felt, felt it give a really lovely look, so I'm just going to go with it. This is my style of card. So with the pink, all I did was I dropped some pink spots into the lovely white areas we left, and that gave my flower instant dimension. Now, you could use a darker purple. You could maybe use a mustardy tone colour a yellowy colour to bring this to life. You could you could do whatever you wanted to obviously. But I felt like the pink looked really, really pretty. Yes, darling. There we go. So I think that's enough. So let's make it more arty. So I'm going to just grab an acrylic block here, look. I'm keeping the camera zoomed in for you so um, you can see exactly what's going on because sometimes the camera being far away, you can't see exactly what's happening. So I've also got uh, a yellow, a reddy orangey colour water-based pen here. Have a look for your stash, see what you've got. You've probably got predominantly most of these anyway. You know how much I love to colour. I've got every pen, every pencil, every oil, every pastel, everything you could imagine. And it all depends on what mood I'm in, to be honest with you. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to scratch some of this colour onto this acrylic block here. Oh, what's that, Tom? Hold it up then. Sorry everyone who wants to show a picture, you know, this is this is why I never get any crafting done. But so far so good, so he's, he's going to put some more colours in there. I hope you are all commenting, obviously I can't see the pictures. Sorry the comments, so fingers crossed. Somebody's commenting Tom. 
So what I'm going to do is I have the red and the yellow on here and I wanted to create a little bit of a background but I didn't want it to look a little like contrived like we've done the background first then the stamping on top. I want it to look a little bit sketchy. So I've put some of this yellow and some of this red onto my block and I'm just mixing a bit of an orangey colour and I'm doing lots of water on there so it's quite diluted. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in the gaps. What happens is the water-based pens react with this water on this brush and you get a bit of a bleed and it totally softens the image, it's beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this light colour here, add some more water, and I'm just going to pop it in these areas. And can you see how it connects to the purple and you get this bleed? I don't know if you can see that there. But it gives a realistic like um, hue around and the colour bleeds into it and it looks really lovely. Now you're probably thinking, oh, that's a bit bright. But always remember, watercolours dry back way, way lighter than when we start. Okay, so it will soften. As soon as you put your heat gun on there, it will soften. So I'm just going to go in this space here. I'm trying, I am wanting to connect, but I'm not wanting to flood, if that makes any sense at all. I don't want it to all blend, all bleed. And I'm happy for it to connect a little bit, but I'm not happy for it to all connect. So just be mindful of that. If you start connecting it all, you are going to end up with like a little bit of a muddy mess. So let's go up here. And then just some clean, clear water to drag that out so it just sort of like fades into nothing. So, so you can see how you're getting this beautiful like arty feel with it. The colours are bleeding slightly. So it's like, is that a stamp? What's going on there? Somebody's spent a lot of time on that. If you are a clean and simple card maker and you do not like um, things that are not perfectly um, positioned and things like that, then you probably don't want to do this card. You might want to do my next card, but I don't think you'll want to do this card. So can you see how it's like, sort of like, looking a little bit arty without, you know, even worrying too much about it? Now, if you do watercolour already, you could have done, the, done a, a layer of, of colour first. Um, but I'm just trying to tr try different things, you know. Some things work better for people, some things don't, you know. So it's a case of, well, let's try something different. If you can't do it that way, let's try... Let's try something else, you know, and then you'll probably find what actually works for you. Can you see now how I've moved on to the yellow a little bit, so it's like sort of maybe creating a little bit of a sunset background. Clean, clear water to drag it up, so it sort of fades into nothing. then just some clean clear water to make sure you don't get a horrid ugly line. I might just touch that a little bit, get a nice bleed around here if we can. There we go. Can we see how that's bled a little bit, it looks absolutely beautiful that, that looks more realistic. Drag it out a little bit. There we go. So just a little area here, make it a little bit darker. Like so. So to get rid of these, like if you get a line around here, turn your artwork around, get clean, clear water and put water on and connect it to the lines and it will get rid of it for you. There you go. Okay, darling, you'll have to just wait till mum's finished now. So, whilst that's wet, wait a minute, darling. While that's wet, I'm just going to take the colour that's on this block I'm going to put some splats on here and what will happen is the splats will blend into the water. <laughs> like so, I'm just going to clean my block. So we've got some lovely like pink on there. And 
and then I'm just going to pop some yellow on there as well. Sweetheart, everybody can hear you. And I'm also going to put some green on there too. Now you absolutely do not have to do the splats. So I'll just show you what I mean when we say let's dry it off. Would you like some gems? So you can see already that that dark, intense, orangey, reddy colour has practically been has practically gone down to a like a, a pinky colour. So you could trim that down and put that on a card. And a lot of clay stamps lend themselves beautifully to creating like wild flower fields and things like that. So here's one I did ahead of time. See, I'll just hold that up for you. Can you see there? There's some splashes on there. I popped some lovely like sparkly sequins on there. You can just see that there. And I used one of the lovely sentiments from uh, the same collection, What Would I Do Without You? So, you know, cut it down don't look at it as an entity if you don't like a part of it make a dl card do a bigger picture and cut into it don't do the size that you need because there'll always be something you don't like and want to cut off so i would probably make that now because i'm not a fan of this big splurge here i would probably make that into a dl card and i'd have two so this has been matte and led on some black and then some lovely coordinating uh, purple top folding note card so one way to look at the lovely stamps before I go on to my second demonstration and before my son uses every single jewel in my pencil case I'm going to show you some more inspiration from the lovely Claire um, and after that I will be ready for my second demonstration So I'm practically ready for my second demonstration. I just had to um, budge the wee boy over a little bit. It was starting to encroach on my postage stamp space. So <laughs> he has no idea. He has no idea what he's doing to me today. Thank goodness it's not every week. So I'm using the lovely um, Rosemary and Thyme set and I'm using this lovely um, leaf element here from the collection. So what we're going to do, something a little bit different. So I have some patterned paper. This is from the Tell Me A Story. And I have some vellum with a hinge on there. 
So first of all, I'm going to stamp some of the lovely um, leaves onto this pattern paper here. Yes, you can open them, it's fine. And I'm going to use a water-based ink and I'm going to pick a nice green. And I'm going to be using peeled paint from the Distress collection. So again, quite a random card, so I'm just going to ink up the stamp. You don't know how much you love something until it's taken away from you. I'm totally missing my Eureka right now, Tom. <laughs> so I'm going to stamp this just random onto here in the green. You get this like lovely detail on there. So I'm just going to do this at random all over this here, but I'm not going to overwhelm um, the background, albeit it will be quite muted. Um, once we do our vellum, our vellum overlay. Don't worry about it, it's fine. <laughs> so again, just going to go quite random with And then I'm just going to stamp this one across this bottom corner here. Like so. And what you get is this like lovely texture on this wood panel background. I think it is sometimes good to stamp onto patterned paper. Um, just to give it a little bit of a difference, a little bit of dimension really. So with the same colour or again with your pens, you can scratch them onto your block. I'm going to pop a little bit of all the greens I've got on my, um, here. They're all water-based, so because it's just normal cardstock, I'm not going to overwhelm it. I'm not going to add lots of water because it'll just pill and bubble. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the um, green. I'm just going to fill in some, not all, of the leaves. And it'll soon come to fruition why I'm doing what I'm doing. So... The detail's there, but the detail's not, if that makes any sense at all. And although I am painting onto paper, I'm still leaving white spaces. Can you see the white space? I'm not colouring it flat. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want it to look like I've got a bit of light on there too. So... Pick a few, let's use a different green. So we've got some variation on there. can see there, I haven't coloured it all, but um, it looks quite fun. So chop out your greens, change your greens, but always remember to leave those white spaces if you have the bravery to do it, should we say. That's I've got a bit of space now, I can move over. I'm not crushed in the corner, I'm always back. So I'm going to leave some of the leaves white, absolutely no colour in them at all and it will soon come to fruition why in a second. But this, um, this set, it's, it's a beautiful set, it has lots of open space in there, so if you are really wanting to do a card with a little bit of difference, these are beautiful. Okay, just one second. That's it, we'll leave that as is. There we go, so you can see there how lovely that is. 
I could just stick that on a card now and be done with a sentiment in the centre, but I have done something a little bit more creative because it's not all about me. So ahead of time, I've got this piece of vellum here and I've scored it down the side. And what this is going to do is it's going to mute our background, but what we're going to do is we're going to do something amazing on the foreground. So I'm just going to open that score line out a little bit. I'm just going to clean that block and get it out of the way because, as you all know, I'm suffering with space at the moment. So I'm going to use the same stamp. Have you seen gems on this, everyone? Somebody's going to be very, very lucky. Cost me a fortune, then. There you go. <laughs> Crikey, Tom. So, I'm going to do a gold vellum overlay. So, I'm just going to anti-static this. I'm going to anti-static the actual vellum. And it'll give me a lovely crisp finish. I have a sticky ink pad and... I'm just going to use the same stamp, but in a different in different areas on here. Please let me know if you've liked one of the cards today and if it's something you do all the time or if it's something you're going to try. I'm just making sure I'm getting it all covered because I can't exactly go back in and do it again twice <laughs> if it's wrong. Not by doing it by myself anyway. So I'm going to do one here. Excuse me, excuse me, Tom. And we're going to do some gold embossing on this one. So, Tom, just wait a second, sweetheart. And you get this lovely print on the vellum. Can you see that there? So, I'm just going to get, pop a little bit more on there. What I am going to do for safety is I'm going to heat set this one and then move on to the second. So I'm going to get my gun really hot before I pop it on my vellum and then I won't get a lot of um, lumps and bumps. As soon as I pop it on, they'll change straight away hopefully, which it is. see that there can't you so let's just repeat the process again so just wait a minute Tom we'll show it at the end please <laughs> whose idea with this pop that down There, I'm just going to turn this around. It's amazing, Tom. Well done. We'll pick a winner in a second. So we've got it in two other areas as well. Is anybody free these summer holidays? Then you like to do a little bit of babysitting, you know? Free to good home for a day. You have to bring him back though. So I'll just pop this away and we'll heat set that one and then we're good to go. How lovely that is. So always remember if you're heating onto vellum, get your gun really, really hot, and this prevents a lot of the warping your card and vellum. Um, you know, when you get that like 
like you can see there, there's hardly absolutely no warp in that in that vellum at all. It's it's pretty flat, and that's because I got my gun really hot before I um, popped it on. So what we're going to do, we're going to pop some tape on our hinge. Like so. We get quite a bit on there. I'm just going to pop my artwork into there. And if I've measured right, we should have like a little book cover shorter than the actual piece. So you get this. Okay. So you get this beautiful sort of look and you can see the beautiful detail behind from the same stamp just something a little bit different so what I'm then going to do is I'm just going to put some tape if the tape allow gun allows no it's a shame never mind we'll use some glue Pop some glue behind and then I'm going to stick this onto some mirror card. Now what I did with mirror card is I only had a small border because I didn't want to detract from the image. So it's sometimes better to have small thin borders. Like so, I'll just give that a second to grab. Move out, sweetheart. Come on. Just one second, ladies and gents. Can you just grab that, please? So then when it's grabbed, you get this beautiful border around. Can we see that there? So I've got a lovely top folding note card here. I'm just going to pop this in the centre. Like so. And then what I did ahead of time was I heat embossed onto mirror card. Can we see that there? You're invited. Now, I've never tried to heat emboss onto that onto um, mirror board before. It absolutely worked a treat. It's beautiful. And I used a gold on gold as well. Can we see that there? All I would say to you is it doesn't heat from underneath. I tried to make sure I didn't get a tarnish. I thought, oh, I'll do it from underneath. I did it from underneath and it never turned. So there must be something in between to stop the heat from getting through. I popped it on top and it changed instantly and I didn't get a tarnish. It's beautiful. So maybe you should try heat embossing onto some of the mirror cards you've got at home because it looks gorgeous. So what I've done is I've popped a pad behind here and because I didn't want this vellum flapping, I mean, it's beautiful. You could pop a, um, some twine down the side with a bow there if you wanted to but I just had to go with the good old You're Invited, which is in the same set. Can you see that there? So you get the beautiful colouring element behind. You get the heat embossed on top. Just a really, really different looking card. If your mind plays tricks on you and you don't like this, maybe pop some sequins on with some glue and glue it down so it's hidden. The adhesive's hidden underneath. But what a different card that is. So we've got two lovely... Um, cards really from some of Claire's earlier products which in my opinion are some of the products that um, are the best-selling products from Claire's collection there is a whole host of products on 
create and craft website there's some of the papers and things like that so do take advantage of the code it won't be there forever it does take a while for us to get these um, codes we do ask for them and it's down to Claire to offer the further discount and create and craft sometimes matching it and what, what whatever however it's going to work I'm here as a little bit of a standing today because obviously Claire is busy we are all busy but it's nice sometimes to step out of your own personal box and use other people's products which you know I love to do as well so whatever you're doing today enjoy it it's nearly coming towards the evening stay safe stay cozy i think we do have a little bit more inspiration before you go so whatever you're doing have a great evening take care everyone bye